Amos, the prophet. Uh, he says that he's a herdsman from Tekoa. Uh, Tekoa, it's not like the camps go over our church goes. Tekoa, it's a little village that's near Bethlehem, not far from Jerusalem. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, Hosea, it's in the south, and Hosea traveled from the south to the northern kingdom of Israel and spoke to the people there, and they weren't sure what to make of this outsider. Uh, they, they liked what he said at first. If you read the first couple of chapters of Amos, he is... Uh, he criticizes all of Israel's neighbors crisscrossing. He criticizes Edom and the people from Gaza and the Ammonites. And they've got to be loving this sermon because he's judging everybody they want to judge. Then he keeps crisscrossing, and then he zooms in on Israel itself, and he denounces Israel for its sinfulness. And, and they just must have been so upset because they like to hear criticism of others, but not of themselves. They feel very pious. Uh, themselves. Uh, this happens in the 8th century BC. Uh, it's a time of, of great economic expansion, but with that economic expansion in Israel came injustice. Uh, the wealthy, I mean, I love the way um, uh, Amos criticizes them. Uh, he begins by talking to the women of all people. Chapter 4, hear this word, you cows of Bashan, who are in the mountain of Samaria, who oppress the poor, who crush the needy, who say to their husbands, bring, bring, that we may drink. Uh, they can't have liked that sermon uh, very much. Over in chapter 6, Amos says, woe to those who are at ease in Zion. Yeah, we value being at ease, but Amos is criticizing this. And the reason is the wealthy are getting wealthier, but there's also, there's also an extravagance, a self-indulgence that comes with this. More importantly, they're ignoring the poor who are right at their doorstep. And in Israel, the, this, is, this is not acceptable. Uh, so Amos goes and offers his um, criticism of this. His authority to do so, it's not that politically he thinks this is a bad idea or socially he thinks it's a bad idea. He's had an experience of God. He says he saw a vision. God spoke to him. Uh, he also knows Israel's traditions. He knows the story of what God had done for people, God's revelation on, on Mount Sinai. And he's calling the people to account for this. God has spoken to him to call the people to repentance, to change their lives. It's very interesting. He says, I am not one of the prophets. Well, he was, one of, he was a prophet. But in those days, there were professional prophets. There were religious leaders that were paid good money to say yes to the authorities, to say yes to the people that were wealthy, to say yes to the king. And Amos says, I'm, I'm not one of those. I'm independent. I'm a herdsman. We may think that's poor, but a herdsman in those days would have been a pretty wealthy individual. And that's interesting because it means that Amos had financial independence. He knew the wealthy. He knew international affairs. He was really able to speak to the issues of the day uh, as one who knew what he was talking about. But interestingly, also, in order to bring God's word to the people, he had to keep a distance from his own social class and probably offended his own social class. He, uh, he, he had to separate himself from his own self-indulgent concerns. He was one of the wealthy, but said there's a problem with accumulating wealth and not, not being faithful uh, to God. So Israel's great sins are injustice and ingratitude to God. Probably the most famous passage uh, in all of Amos uh, is in chapter 5, uh, beginning in verse 21. Uh, Amos goes into to the place of worship where the people feel, feel very smug and pious indeed. And he speaks on behalf of God who says, I hate, I despise your feasts. I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me burnt offerings, I will not accept them. Take away from me the noise of your songs, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. You know, he, he's alluding to, to the idea of, of a wadi. You know, many of the water courses in Israel only have water during the rainy season of the year. And he says that people's uh, religiosity is like that. It's dry most of the time. Once in a while, there's some water flowing. He says that God wants a righteousness that is like an ever-flowing stream. Hmm? And that God wants justice. And the Hebrew word translated justice is mishpat. And mishpat isn't the, the good being rewarded and the evil being punished. Mishpat justice is when the poorest are cared for. It's when society reaches down and cares for those who are needy. He calls them to be this kind of just society. Of course, Martin Luther King Jr., in his great speech in front of the Lincoln Memorial in August of 1963, played on this, let justice roll down like waters, righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Not surprisingly, Amaziah, the high priest, who heard Amos' words said, we hope that you will just go home. <laughs> 
I hope that we'll enjoy um, studying Amos together this week.